The learning goal of this lesson is to go through my process of making educational videos, focusing on the subject English. However, much of what I will go through could be applicable for any subject. Now, the title of this video is completely pretentious and untrue. There are lots of different ways to flip the classroom, and I've added a list of my favourite websites in the description section. Educational videos are fantastic. For teachers, the videos allow them to spend more time in the classroom pursuing student-centred, project-based learning. Suddenly, students are actively involved in the classroom, actually creative rather than passively listening to a lecture. They're engaged in higher order thinking. Because the lecture component of the lesson is a video, teachers can add music, sound effects, video clips, definitions, quotes, etc. to make the lecture more interesting and more informative. As a new teacher, I have found that making the videos is a great way for me to learn the content. If you're one of my students watching this, that's why I'm getting you to make educational videos. I guarantee you will learn a lot making them. The first stage of my process is to read or watch the text. Anthony Hopkins is renowned for reading scripts a hundred times before he performs. He does this because he wants to understand the meaning of the play or film he is performing in. You probably won't have time to get a hundred reads in, but I would encourage you to reread and rewatch your text as many times as you can. Every time you read, you will understand different things about the text. You will reap the rewards of good note-taking when it comes to essays, assignments, or making educational videos. I read all written texts on my iPad. The note-taking function on an iPad is superb. What I look for is the key idea of the text, the language and techniques that the composer uses to position us, and how the composer uses form and structure to shape meaning. There will generally be a rubric for the unit you're studying. This rubric should form the lens through which you focus your reading and note-taking. I encourage all students to highlight the keywords in the rubric at the start of the unit. At the moment, I'm studying the diary of a young girl, Anna Frank's diary, and some poetry written by children during the Holocaust. In the scope and sequencing, the focus of the unit is outlined. In this unit, students contrast their knowledge of people and other cultures with their understanding of self. Students examine differing perceptions in history-based texts. Students will be introduced to a selection of children's poetry from the Holocaust, they will explore and analyse a variety of children's poems, examining how language shapes meaning. In making notes during this unit, I'm going to be looking for quotes from the text that provide knowledge of people and other cultures, understanding of self, perception of history-based texts, and examples of language that shapes meaning. My next step is to read and watch what other people have written or said about the text. I note these down as a series of quotes. In particular, I try to find essays or interviews where the composer talks about the text. This was impossible with the diary of a young girl, so I looked for interviews with Anna's father, Otto, who was responsible for editing and publishing the text. There are lots of great resources. Personally, my favourites tend to be university lectures and documentaries. In my Word document, I have the title of the text and the composer at the top, with a web address if I found it online. I will then write down the most meaningful quotes as I read or hear them. You'll notice that I'm highlighting in different colours, green, yellow and purple, each colour identifies that I think a quote will work for a particular video. Green is the video on context, audience and purpose. Yellow is for the video on language and techniques. And purple is for the video on form and structure. My rule is that I need to have at least three different sources before I can make a video. However, I generally have about five to ten sources. I'm now ready to make my first video, which is on purpose, context and intended audience. Establishing the composer's purpose is essential because the language, techniques, form and structure that the composer uses is all designed to achieve this purpose. Now, the context of the composer's life and what is happening in the world around them informs this purpose. There is some message that the composer wants a specific group of people to receive. I describe what I write as an essay speech. It's generally quite informal. I speak in first person, second person or third person depending on my objective. My speech tends to be colloquial, and I think it works because I'm speaking to my audience, not writing an essay. After I've written my dialogue, I create a PowerPoint. The purpose of the PowerPoint is to create a visual image to match and complement the dialogue. I always start with the learning goal of the video, and I have photographs, maps, definitions, information, quotes, timelines, statistics, recaps, etc. I try to avoid having an image that just retells the dialogue although this is unavoidable with quotes. 
Once I finish my PowerPoint, I take a manual screenshot of each image. Now I open up iMovies, and I create a new movie by clicking on the plus sign at the middle of the top section of the page. Follow all the steps to name your video. I then click on the import button, with an arrow that is next to the new. I scroll down to find and select everything that I've screenshotted. Then I press import all. You can have some fun with the title section. I have titles that I use for all my videos, uh, so I simply cut and paste them from the last video that I've made. Then I select all the screenshots and I press E to put them at the end of my clips, or W to wedge them in between clips where the cursor sits. I also have clips that always end my videos, so I cut and paste again. The screenshots are always on the Ken Burns effect when I first import them, which is an effect that I want, generally, so I select the fit option. I'm now ready to do my voiceover, which I always do a practice read through first. This is a great tip for your essays, always read them aloud. You find so many mistakes when you read out loud, because your mistakes are difficult to read. You'll find yourself tripping over your sentences. Make your corrections, and then do your voiceover. Once the voiceover is down, you can proceed on to editing. Here you'll be extending and shortening the images so they start and finish where you want them to in relation to the dialogue. You'll also be cleaning up the dialogue. The magnifying slide is really useful for adjusting image and audio clips. For example, there can be big pauses, and that's where I would magnify, and then click and drag the edge of the video. Command B also splits the selected image or audio, and this is a great way of separating your mistakes from the audio you want to keep. Once I've finished with the editing, the images and voiceover, I add the music. I've bought the right to use a song called Bring the Fun, which my wife is heartily sick of. Music added, I do a watch through of the entire video. If I'm happy with it, I press on the share button, top right, and then the file button. I then create a heading with a picture and keynote, which I screenshot. This becomes a thumbnail that I will select in YouTube under custom thumbnail when I'm publishing my video. Once my video file has uploaded onto my computer, I go into my YouTube channel and I select the upload button at the top right of the screen, which is an arrow pointing upwards. I select my file, write a description of the video, add my thumbnail, and write down the keywords. And with a press of the publish button at the end, I've made an educational video. And that's exactly what you can do too. I can't encourage you enough to get stuck in and start making videos. You can do all sorts of cool things, add movie clips, use a green screen, etc. There are so many resources on YouTube to teach you how to do these things. I find it really enjoyable, but I can't stress enough that this is just my way of making videos, very much influenced by living in a shoebox house with two young children. There are lots of other wonderful ways to do it, and to do it really well. I'd encourage you to watch lots of videos. In the description section, I've posted links to some of my favorite flippers. They're cray cray, and they're wonderful. I'd encourage you to use the ideas that you like. Remember what Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. So as the orchestra music begins to play, the final thing for me to do is to thank you so much for watching.